Hello designers, this is Rebecca, and I'm going to show you how to set up a Victorian poster in InDesign. So we're going to make a new file, and from here we'll choose the print profile along the top of the new document window. We're going to change our units to inches, and this poster will be 11 inches wide by 24 inches tall. We'll choose the portrait orientation. We only need one page. We don't need any columns right now, and I will scroll on down. And if you'd like, you could have two, I'm sorry, you could have maybe three or four columns, but I'm going to just use something else once we get into InDesign. For your margins, you can have them be anywhere from a quarter of an inch to, I'd say, a half an inch. I wouldn't go any smaller or larger than that. And we can leave our, our bleeds and our slugs alone and hit Create. Then from there, we have this beautiful long poster. Um, we have our margins set up, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in a poster to use as a template. Uh, so I'm going to go to File, Place, and from there, go ahead and find a poster that you like. So I found this one. I'm going to just click and drag it across my the height of my uh, canvas here. That looks good. So let me zoom out a bit. I'm going to want to align this so that my um, my margins meet up. So in, in, in InDesign, since we have to create the image frame, I'm just going to extend the frame a little bit larger so that I can get my image itself to be the right height. So I'm just nudging it using my arrow keys on my keyboard. It's a little short. No, that looks good, actually. Okay, so I have a little extra stuff hanging out at the bottom, but that's okay. All right, so this looks good to me. Let me just center it, um, and I will double-click on my image frame so that it snaps to the size of the image itself, and then I will align in my Properties panel to the page, and then I'll choose the uh, Align Horizontal Center, and then now we're lined up perfectly on that artboard. Great. So from there... I'm going to go ahead and use my type my uh, type tool to start laying out my important text fields. So I want to lay out the who, what, when, where, and how much, if I can. So this is right here is going to be my who, and I'm going to keep it within the margins there. So I'm just going to click and drag a type field so that it's about the same height as the existing text on my, my template there. And then I'm going to do the same down here. This one looks really important, doesn't it? And then this one looks important. So I will click and drag there. And this one down here, this is the where, or the maybe that's the, the why, because it's part of that comic festival. Up here is my uh, when, and above that is my where. So it's hard to see my text field right now, but that's okay, and they're not we're not going to thread these text fields together. This information does not need to be linked, okay? Then I can also go ahead and if I want to include an illustration or include my logo really large as my center illustration or include a photo that I've converted to a painter style, uh, like an oil painting or watercolor in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and click on the rectangle frame tool and just click and drag around this illustration because I chose this uh, poster because I like the layout of it. All right, so that's that. And then um, I can also go ahead and draw any horizontal rules using my line tool that I like. So I can grab this one, just draw along, just trace that that easily. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I give it a stroke now so that I don't lose it <laughs> somewhere. And I'll zoom in. There's this one here. This one's really close to my margin. Uh, so, you know, just be careful that you, um, you know, keep everything in that margin. You made it for a reason, right? And that one didn't have a stroke, so let me give it a stroke before I click off of it. So just stick stick inside your margins, no matter what the uh, poster that you're using as a template says. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and scroll down here. If you don't end up using all of these horizontal rules, that's okay. They're just there as a reminder that that's something that by adding line to 
a, a layout, it really helps dire direct the viewer's eye around and keeps um, you in charge of the information hierarchy. So I'll keep going. And notice that uh, some of these lines, they don't extend as far. They're not as wide as the other lines. So you can also play with that too. Um, and there we go. So I have some lines in place. I have some text fields and I have my uh, image field there. So from there, if I want to go into my layers panel, I can just turn off the visibility of that um, background template layer that we created there. And now I have a really great start to my poster. So the next thing that I recommend doing is picking out your fonts and bringing them in. You can also, before you do that, is go ahead and create a Creative Cloud library if you don't have one created yet for this project. So um, I will create a new library and I can call it, um, you can call it the name of your performer, you can call it Victorian, whatever you'd like. I'll call mine like Victorian Serpent because my performer is a serpent woman. And I'll hit create. And then from there, let me go ahead and bring in my logo. So I'll go to File and Place. And then I'll go find my logo. And I'll just drop it here. And then from there, I can click on this plus button and hit this extract from image. And when you do that, it's going to bring up this really cool extract from image um, options window. OK, so the first option along the top here is color themes, and it just automatically drops in these little things, these little color points to guess what kind of color theme you'd like to create. How nice is that? So you can change the color mood drop down here from colorful to bright, and it might um, change some of the secondary colors that you have. It's really wonderful. Keep going, I'll just show you all the options there. So I think I like the muted one because it picks my primary color and then a secondary uh, lighter tint, and that looks good to me. So I'll hit Save to CC Libraries as my color theme there. Then you can also choose Shapes from here. And you can mess with this. It's a little goofy. Um, you can use this eraser tool to like erase all this text and have it just select this circle part of the shape. But it's going to make it look like an image trace type of illustrator feel. So that's not that great yet. I think Adobe needs to work something out a little better <laughs> for that option. But that's just my opinion. And then they have this type option. So this is pretty neat. You can click and drag around some type in your design and then choose find similar fonts. And it will go through the Adobe fonts. This one's finding some ornaments. As if I keep going, it's finding this, um, these different, uh, look at like decorative fonts. I found this sort of, um, these kind of old Englishy um, Gothic fonts that are kind of cool. So that's pretty neat that there's these options here. Okay, so that might be a nice way to, to find some fonts to add. Um, I can hit, close if I don't see the exact font that I chose. This font that I chose that I made this logo from is not from the Adobe Creative Cloud fonts library. So that's why it's not finding that exact one. The other thing I can do with this logo still selected is click on this uh, plus mark and just import this into my library as a graphic itself. So the whole logo will live there. OK. And then what's great about the Creative Cloud libraries is if I go back into Illustrator or if I go into Photoshop, or if I go into um, After Effects, they'll, this library will be accessible on all that software in my that's included with my Adobe um, my Adobe account, so that I can access those easily from all those places. So from there, I can go ahead and start typing in. If I want to just use placeholders, I can. So I can type in the who, the word who right here, and give it a color. And then I can go into um, my characters panel or my properties panel and I can uh, enter some sort of a fat face font or gothic font or grotesque font. And then I can increase the font size. I can even type in an amount that if this isn't large enough, all these are going to want to be centered for the most part. So you can use your selection tool and select all of it all of the fields and then just um, not only choose center align, but if you have, oh, no, I can't do that. Sorry. 
I can only choose the te text type fields. <laughs> and um, then from there, use your paragraph alignment options and choose their center align there. And then as you noticed on the template, sometimes they really spread out the um, tracking. So I can do that as well. Uh, the tracking option is right here underneath my letting option. And you can spread that word out. You can keep going beyond that 200. You can manually type in an amount. And then if you have them very, very far sp spread out and it's a short word like this, then you can go ahead and add a little decorative element between the, the letters. Um, if it's not the same height as the letters, then it will still read as one word. And by adding that decorative element or ornament, it'll make it look completely intentional that you meant to spread these all out. <laughs> the other thing is that you don't, you don't need the words to extend all the way to the margins on every single line, especially if it's one of these really huge headline words, one of the, the top five of the information hierarchy. Uh, you just want a majority of the text to touch the, the left and right mark to extend from the left and right margin so that you can um, create this beautiful visual rectangle and make it feel Victorian. Then um, you can also add an ornament, um, an ornamental border around the edge. That's a really nice touch. Um, you can go in and on the little, the fields that have all of this extra information, let me just turn that on so you can see. This tiny itty bitty information, do not use any placeholder text in your layouts. So, uh, you know, go ahead and read some of these old posters if you can get a high enough resolution image to, to see what some of it says. And then write up your own copy, make sure that there's no typos in it and um, just plug it in. If you can't write that much copy, because you are a designer and you're not a copywriter, I totally get it, um, then go ahead and just omit some of those groups of text and either make your text taller or um, you know fill in that area with more ornament, something like that. But we are stacking groups of text, as you can see in these different layouts. We never ever grab our text, let me turn this off, we never stretch our text. Oops, I'm just stretching the type. Uh, I'm just stretching the, um, the the type box itself. But what I'm trying to say is we never distort the text horizontally or vertically. We only increase the font size or we extend the tracking. And please pay attention to your letting. Uh, the letting was very intentional. Um, in while laying all these out on a on a printing press and so just make sure that that's nice and um i would say consistent throughout the entire poster um you don't have to by any means go by the automatic letting in your characters panel um right here for this assignment they adjusted they made that letting tight because they wanted to fit as much info on these posters this was before people learned that you know, making something too overwhelming might not keep your viewer there very long. So just keep those things in mind um, because we're emulating Victorian and uh, trying to break our comfort zone from all of this clean, neat, modern design that we've been taught to going back and paying homage to the Victorian age posters. Thank you so much for watching.